55 seconds of logos. Damn it, man! That was our ride! How does Kirk not know the details of the plan enough to know that there's a beast waiting in the Red Forest for them to ride? Did Bones, the Doctor, make the escape plans without consulting Kirk? The Enterprise is their god now, which makes them no different from 40 million people on Earth. This guy uses an analog clock in 2259 because he remembers the time when his grandfather... No, wait, he doesn't. Who are you? Well, I could tell you, but I don't want to ruin the surprise that everyone already knows. Kirk uses a record player in 2259 because he remembers the time when his great uncle... Oh, no, he doesn't. That's why you gave me your I ship. I gave you my ship because I saw greatness in you. He may have seen greatness in him, but Kirk is right. He got the ship by breaking all the rules and he wasn't punished. He was rewarded for it. They've taken the Enterprise away from you. Oh, don't worry, I'm sure Kirk will have the ship back in four minutes' time because of some unforeseen catastrophe. Mentor finds Protégé in an extremely remote hiding location and dismisses it with throwaway line about knowing the Protégé really well cliché. Wow, Pike is not only a block, but he totally made that girl disappear completely. Right now it's a damned hole on the ground, 42 men and women are dead. I don't know, 42? That seems awfully low considering all the people that we saw in the building at the time, and the magnitude of the explosion. This is awesome Minority Report style technology, but it's really impossible without multiple cameras. None of Starfleet's senior captains and first officers notice the blinding red light entering the room for several seconds. How does Kirk manage to avoid dying or being hit by any bullets, shrapnel, or glass when this huge glass wall explodes behind him? Okay, so the senior leadership is all in one room so that the so-called Harrison can blow everyone away, but did Starfleet's airspace defense go drinking while this meeting occurred? How does a ship, especially one that has been reported stolen, fly towards Starfleet headquarters without being identified and warned and probably shot down before it ever gets a chance to fire into this war room? The gun clearly hits the underside of the ship and is about to fall harmlessly, but then manages to hit its target anyway. Why does Spock use Pike's last few seconds of life to basically rape his mind and steal his memories? It's not only morally wrong, it's illogical. Oh, now some aircraft show up. It's a portable transwarp beaming device. Excuse me? Portable transwarp beaming device? Why doesn't, like, everyone in Starfleet have one of these? This little montage of ships is pretty awesome. But why would the Admiral, who has developed a secret evil starship, include a model of said secret evil starship right out in the open for all to see? I'm fine, Boats. The hell you are. Movie strongly hints that something is wrong with Kirk, health-wise, and then just drops it and never explains it. Is that a red starship? Why would you make a red starship? And why just one, when the entire rest of the fleet is clearly silver and gray? Why is Scotty the only one really inspecting these torpedoes and giving a shit about their contents? There are two science officers on board. One specializes in advanced weaponry. I guess we can just chalk it up to the fact that they needed someone off the ship later to help the crew out, so they pulled a name out of the hat and decided Scotty would be the one who gets morally righteous and quits. Your vitals are way off. More ominous and ambiguous worry about Kirk's health. Does he have a health problem? Your guess is as good as mine. The movie will never address it again. Chekhov gets on his red shirt, goes to engineering, and does a check on all systems in the span of about 30 seconds. JJ's cheating with time again here because Kirk leaves the bridge, Sulu sits in the chair and starts his message to the cargo bay about prepping the shuttle, and before that very message is even done being broadcast, we have Kirk, Spock, and Uhura already in new outfits arriving at the ship. Fantastic. Good thing you don't care about dying. I am sorry, Lieutenant. Uhura turns this away team mission into a Katherine Heigl movie. Why was there a need for a disguise? And if there was a need for a disguise, why is it okay to remove it now? Sounds like we have a Superman on board. Nope, he would have broken everyone's necks by now. Wait, so am I to understand the Starfleet communicators can reach from Klingon space to Earth? Is there even any limit on their range? Isn't there like a host of problems in this very movie that could be solved if they just picked up their long-range cell phone communicator and buzzed someone? I understand you want to put your main characters in as many scenes as possible, but honestly, you send your chief medical officer along with the weapons chick to open a potentially deadly torpedo? No! No you don't! You don't even send Sulu for that shit. You send a red shirt. I can't figure out which wire to cut on this bomb, so I'll just destroy it willy-nilly, but everything still works out okay and the bomb doesn't detonate cliche. So you go to the trouble of making your advanced spaceship building facility a secret and put it all the way out behind a moon of Jupiter, but you don't have any sensors or cameras so that you know when people are sneaking up on it? My name is Khan. Surprise, but only if you're four. ETA of the incoming ship. Three seconds, sir. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I heard what you said. How does Carol Marcus have a British accent when her father has a grizzled uh, Peter Weller accent? Listen to the way Admiral Marcus says John Harrison here. The fugitive John Harrison, you went. Could they seriously not get Peter Weller into a green screen somewhere to re record that line? Oh no, they pulled out the guns that take a really, really long time to shoot anything. Guess what I found behind Jupiter? Scotty has been on this ship the whole time? And only now, after the Enterprise has been torpedoed and people have died, has he sabotaged anything on the Admiral's ship? He could have stopped the warp drive, too. Bones, what are you doing with that Tribble? Tribble reference. Great. I suppose I'm supposed to now, right? I fill weapons in three minutes. It then takes over nine minutes. Why would a cargo bay door ever be so small? 
Whoa, who is this? And why doesn't she have a bigger part in this movie? You killed a Klingon patrol. How would he know about that? How would anyone know about that? Oh, I guess he really is Superman. Now, unlike some idiots on YouTube, I know there's gravity in space. But apparently in the future, anything just drifting near the Earth at, say, moon distance is pulled to a fiery death within two minutes. Since we know the torpedoes getting transported are armed, how come Khan couldn't figure that out? Don't these ships know when other ships do certain things, like arm missiles through various bullshit heat signatures and sci-fi nonsense? Who the f*** is this? Abandon the ship. All due respect, Commander, but we're not going anywhere. Man, you know what would come in really handy right now? A standard issue portable transwarp beaming device. There's pretty much no way this happens. And does Chekhov have the strength to grab roughly 400 pounds out of midair and keep a firm grip on it without falling himself? Why is there a brewery in the middle of the starship? Not one of these kicks Kirk does has any business actually helping shove the housing back into place. His angle of attack is all wrong if he's actually trying to move it laterally. Even when he succeeds, the kick is down and somehow the housing goes down, then over and back up into place. Now wait just a damn minute. Sulu said the ship would be incinerated upon re-entry if they didn't get the shields back up, and then we saw the ship go through the clouds, which I'm pretty sure comes after you've entered Earth's atmosphere, and then the shields come back online? Shields restored! Star Trek Into Darkness steals Kirk's con screen from Star Trek The Wrath of Khan. I thought this movie f***ing ended already. Well, people give Man of Steel a lot of for all the innocent people that must have died during the final battle, but damn. I mean, this is a lot of f***ing dead people right here. Why does Khan bother throwing Spock on top of the transport when throwing him off the transport might actually kill him? This Spock as an action hero scene would work a lot better if it featured someone other than Spock. Bring them up to the ship. As they keep moving, I can't get a lock on either of them. Can you beam someone down? How is it that you can't get a lock on two people fighting because they're on a moving target, but you can beam someone down to the moving target? It only took one shot to stun Khan earlier, but now it takes a million. Movie completely undercuts any emotional punch by copping out and reviving the tragically dead main character 12 minutes after he died. why you are still alive is because I am allowing it. They're sending you back to the academy. Oh, back to school, back to school to prove to dad that I'm not a fool. Thank you for convening on such short notice. And for stopping on your way to change clothes into that gray emergency meeting uniform. War is coming, and who is gonna lead us? You? They're fueling their missiles. We don't have time to f around. I think that guy over there is just playing Galaga. They say most of your brain shuts down in cryosleep. All but the primitive side. My name 